Welcome everyone to yet another tutorial. This time we're going to chill out a bit on the Elden Ring content and go back to Dota 2 as it was decided by my patrons. The Stroke of Fate ability used by Grimstroke is a very cool spell that travels forward and deals damage based on how many units it has hit. We will focus on its mechanics and setup rather than visuals. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Here we are in a pretty empty project. All I really did was create a plane and give it a check-in material. Begin by creating an empty game object. Rename it Stroke. Create a new particle system. Rename it Loop. Okay, set its color to a red, then scroll down to render settings and change its render mode to mesh and pick a capsule. And for material, I will use the default line material that comes with Unity. Set its render alignment to velocity, then go back up here and change its shape to a sphere. Start speed to a very low value. Enable 3D start size and lower both its X and Z values so that you are left with this pointy capsule. Then enable 3D start rotation and set its X to be 90. Alright, pretty cool. I'm going to lower its lifetime to 2 seconds and increase simulation speed to 5. Go down to emission settings and increase its rate over time. One last thing I will do is enable color over lifetime and make it fade in and out. That looks good enough. Create yet another particle system and rename it ground. Set its start speed to zero. Enable 3D start rotation and set its X to be minus 90. Color to a red so it matches our loop, simulation space to world and also increase its simulation speed to 5. Under emission settings, set its rate over time to 0 and rate over distance to 5. That's actually too many. 2 is better. Change its shape to a sphere and lower its radius to the minimum possible. Scroll down to render settings and set its render alignment to local. It looks good enough, but if you see here, it's clipping through the ground, so go back up to shape and under position set its Y value to something very low, like 0.1. Okay, perfect. I'm going to enable color over lifetime and make it fade out. Oh, that's nice. One last thing I will do is set its start size to a random between two constants. Oh yeah, that is pretty cool. Reset its position. Make the loop a child of the stroke and the ground a child of the loop. Make sure both the loop and ground positions are set to zero. I'm actually going to make the loop size a bit more thin and lower its speed. Okay, good enough. Add a new C sharp script to the stroke game object and call it stroke of fate, then add a sphere collider with its trigger enabled. Let's open up our script. We'll begin by setting up our variables. A string called tag to check and a bunch of floats. Movement speed, the distance it will travel before destroying itself, damage, damage per hit, the spawn rotation and location, the destroy delay, and a hike check a game object called impact effects and I forgot to create this, we will do it after we're done coding. A layer mask for a raycast, a vector 3 to store our starting position, a particle system we just created and a boolean to control our update loop. Inside start we have to reference the loop particle system we just created. 
Now we set the strokes position to be to the right plus the spawn location variable. Then for rotation, we rotate it on the Y axis to face whatever rotation we want it to have. Lastly, for our start function, we assign the start position variable to be the strokes position. Inside update, we have to check if we're dead, then return and don't run the rest of the code. If we're not dead though, we create a new function called movement, then add it in here. Down below, we create a temporary variable to check the distance we have traveled and then create yet another function, this one called finished and add it inside here. Awesome. Inside movement, we will move the stroke forward using the speed variable. Now we have to do our raycast to position this. The raycast position will be the transforms position plus the height check variable inside the y value. Down below, we create the raycast using the ray position downwards. We out the hit info, and for distance, we use the height check variable times 1.1 so that we make sure that it goes through the stroke when raycasting. In here, we create a temporary variable to store the hit point, then add a very low value on its y axis so that it does not go through the ground. Lastly, we assign this position. Before we move on to our finish function, we have to do our trigger and collisions. Do a untrigger enter and inside here we will check the tag as well as make sure we are not dead. If that is the case, we create yet another function called collision that will take in a transform parameter then go back up here and add it. Inside collision, we increase the damage then create the impact particle system at the target's position then make it destroy itself using the destroy delay. Inside collision is where you will also damage your enemies. Of course, I cannot show you how you do this because every game is different. On to our finish function. Here we stop the update loop by setting is dead to true and stop the particle loop as well. Then finally destroy this game object using the destroy delay. All done coding. Let's go back to Unity now. I'm going to set up the scene with some enemies for us to hit real quick. The forward direction of our stroke is this, so I'm going to move the enemies over here. We need to set the enemy tags to be the enemy or whatever you want it to be. Okay, for the stroke to be able to call our onTrigger function inside the script, we need a rigid body. Uncheck use gravity. I'm going to duplicate the enemy so that we have more units to hit. Let's set up these values now. Tag to check has to be enemy, of course. Speed to 1 so it moves slowly. Distance to 10 units. Damage to 200. And damage increase to 50. Spawn rotation and location, I will leave it at 0 for now. Destroy delay to 2 seconds. Height check to 1. And now we have to create the impact effect, so just duplicate the loop particle system. Drag it outside the stroke game object to unparented and delete the ground particle system. Rename it impact. For its 3D start size, I will make it a random between two values on the Y axis only. Uncheck looping. Remove rate over time and add a burst of 100 particles. I'm going to enable size over lifetime and pick a curve going up. Okay, good enough. Reset its position and drag the impact game object into your project folder to create a prefab then just delete it from your scene. Now inside your stroked, drag your newly created prefab into the impact effects. For ground layer, let me zoom out and select my ground plane. Its layer is set to ground. You can set it to whatever layer you want. This is important for your raycast to hit the right game object in your scene. So I will set it to be the ground layer and then drag the stroke into my project folder to create a prefab of it. I will drag the scene window to the side then hit play. Mm. The ground particle system is not creating its particles. Um, Okay, I know exactly why. Open up your stroke prefab and select the ground particle system, then over here under emitter velocity mode, change it from rigid body to transform. Let's see it now. Okay, great. 
I'm going to increase the speed distance to 20. It's all working as intended. Let's check out the starting location and rotation. So if I set its spawn location to 1 and spawn rotation to 30, it will spawn one unit to the side and go forward at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, that is actually the wrong angle. I'm going to do a small location to 1 and rotation to minus 10. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Go play around with it, change some values, make things fade in and out, increase or lower their emission rates, I don't know, go crazy. Thank you all for watching and all my awesome Patreons for helping me and choosing the content we create in the channel. See you guys in the next video.